Not so long ago, I dived into a strange epiphenomena of meditation and found out that it's called spandana, from spanda, meaning vibration. And it was a crazy feeling as if in my chest there was something vibrating in a very, very high frequency. So via this word spanda and spandana, I came across the spanda karikas, a text from 1200 years old where a lot of interesting things are said about vibrations. In the spanda karikas, we find a framework for meditative and yogic practices and the essence is that you want to experience and stabilize your consciousness in this spanda, in this primal vibration of consciousness. So this text offers a number of insights and practical tips for meditation practitioners to realign with the intrinsic vibratory nature of our existence and of our consciousness. And this is the way to facilitate spiritual awakening and liberation. For instance, in this text, there are exercises to enhance dynamic stillness. It's called Kriya Shakti. And that is basically meditation in flow. So you're not just sitting, closing the eyes, but you're basically aware in doing, aware in the flow. This text is a non-dualistic text so a sort of Advaita text, but it's from a different Eastern philosophical system. And it emphasizes universal consciousness and dynamic energy as two aspects from one medal. Central in this text is the concept of Spanda or Spandana. And this refers to the vibrational nature of everything, including our consciousness. The text describes how the universe has been created in a pulsing way, in a vibration way. And modern physics actually supports the idea that everything in our universe has a vibrational quality. And that's why it is so enlightening to experience this vibrational quality in deep meditation if you feel the subjective phenomena of spanda, the pulsations, the frequencies in your body, the vibrations, if they start, it is a clear indicator that you are on the correct track. Now let's read some sutras from this text and let's read them a little bit on meta level and not go into the very complicated Indian concepts you see here with the words Anava and Kardama Mala and all. But it's clearly that what it's trying to express here, the text, is that our ego functions, like our projections and our identifications, makes it for us impos impossible to reach real knowledge, to reach, to reach Gnosis. This is what the first two, nine and ten sutras say. Once you have realized the essence of this vibrational principle, then you know that this is you. It is not your daily self. It is basically your essence or your inner self. So if we can experience in deep meditation emptiness, like in shunyata meditation, that means that this emptiness is there because there is a watcher watching it. And that is the Spanda principle. And then in the last sutra it says that the Spanda or the divine principle uh, manifests in the subject and the object. And then totally against our own upbringing in the West, uh, the essence of this text is focused on the subjective. It is in the subjective that everything rises. Also the experience of the objective outer world. 
Now the text follows up, stating that if you're totally enlightened, awakened, then your consciousness is pure and watching is there all the time during sleep, dream and awakeness. We know how complicated this will be for us. We are not even aware in the waking state. So in the enlightened yogi, which can enter in a deep meditation, or I have to say this different, which is in a state of deep meditation, the knowledge, the gnosis, the nana is there, and it is there not only in the waking state, but also in the deep sleep. So then the text uh, proceeds, and the essence of the sutras is that if you are in a state of not with a clear mind, and not with a clear consciousness, then you identify it with all kinds of stuff happening in our consciousness field, and you're directly focusing on this or that, and up or down, and you see the differences, and you are always choosing a certain position you identify with, either that you're a male or a female, or whatever identifications we all have, but basically that the state of spanda, of ultimate vibration is that you recognize everything is just a divine source in which you are blooming. And then the old sutras, they conclude that you should be in a state of self-remembering, like in Sutra 21, constant awareness of the spanda principle in the common workaday world. So, walk your talk, sink in meditation in whatever you do, meditation in flow. And that whenever you understand and grasp these divine principles, that you automatically transform and at the end becomes, become the essence yourself, which you already are but you need this path to recognize who you really are and reconnect with the divine. An old text, so it's all stated with old concepts, but the essence of the message is quite relevant for us. It is a transformational development. Meditation needs to origin from a deep longing, a deep wishing, to reconnect with the divine. It is not just something like, I'm gonna sit, I close my eyes. I think in the Western world, we grossly misunderstand the essence of meditation. And of course, reading these old texts is not very, very easy. And grasping the essence is not very easy. But one thing is clear. There are indicators on the path that you're doing fine. And this is where we have focused on in this channel, so that you can use it kind of like a checklist. Okay, this was the message of today.